ready. What is happening, people of all nations, my friends, all 200 of y'all that's always watching <laughs> my reactions. Thank you guys so much for tuning in once again to some more Prison Break Season 2. Episode 2 is here today. Man, that was a crazy episode 1, ain't it? Crazy episode 1, I don't know what's going to happen next, but I'm excited to watch some more Prison Break, man. Um, so without no further ado, we're just going to jump in just an announcement for you guys. I'm going to say this on all my episodes. Hopefully I can say this on my intro. So you guys know we are going to be, by the time you're seeing this on YouTube, for all the people who are watching on YouTube, by the time you're seeing this on YouTube, we should be further along in the season on Patreon, probably finish by now on Patreon with season two. So if you want to watch ahead. Um, you can go ahead and go join the Patreon. Um, as I said, join the five the, the five dollar tier to see early reactions to this show. Okay, um, and you don't have to wait until they come out because I'm only dropping like three or four episodes per week. So you know what I'm saying. Over there, you can just binge watch. You know the season pretty much. So you go over there, see how f farther along we are um over there and you can join in on all the fun and if you go over there guys don't forget you can leave comments and stuff like that over on patreon as well um you know and i see them just as much um so if you want to wait that's okay as well um but i encourage you guys to go over there if you want to watch more you can't wait um or you're itching for to see some more episodes of prison break by all means join the fun anyways let's jump into this reaction and i will see you guys right after for the review really <laughs> canadian and mexican border patrols have all the mug shots port tax on high alert See if we can get the Mexican Border Patrol to set up checkpoints 50 miles in. The warden over at Fox River called, asked to be kept in the loop. What should I tell him? That he's no longer in it. That info that you asked for is on your desk when you get in? Thank you. Where is he right now? <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Jeez. Mm. Photos are in the paper. They're probably all over the news. Yeah, and you didn't see that coming? <laughs> What's so funny? The two of you cracks me up. Here's to amateur hour. What do you say? Saludo? Yeah, yuck it up, funny man. Last supper, boys. This is the part where we say goodbye. It's not much. It's enough to get you started. Hey, uh... No. I'm not telling you where Fibonacci is. Well, I didn't ask. I only ask for a quarter for a phone call. Nick four. I wonder what happened to the other guys. They all had a head start, except the T-Bag. Yeah, he, he was bleeding pretty bad. Think he's dead? No. <laughs> yeah. How are you not passing out from that oh, pain? I don't know. I still have to clean it. But you're done. Yes. LJ has a hearing today to determine if he gets tried as an adult. I can get him. It's not the right time. When will it be? After we go to Mexico. After we're off the news. They framed him for a double homicide. As soon as he loses his hearing, they're gonna ship him out to an adult facility. So today in the courthouse is my only chance to get him. They took Veronica. They're not gonna take my son. I know. I know. 
can't risk it though, man. Behind. But we can't do this now. There's no plan in place. Believe me, I know that courthouse have been there more times than I can remember. The only person guarding him is the bailiff. He carries mace and a big stick. So you're gonna bum rush the courthouse. That's your plan. Are you serious? Yeah. Hey yo, we headed out, man. Tell me everything you know about the courthouse. It's a bad idea, man. You get any sleep? Couple hours. Eight of them. I still can't believe it. This is Exhibit A why you don't let women work in the military, the police force, and especially inside a male prison. Because look what you get. Dr. Sweet Cheeks leaves the door open for Schofield. And here we are. Sounds like it's a little bit more. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, all right, mister. <laughs> all right. Calm down. Calm down. This has nothing to do with that. That is so not the reason why you would not let women uh, do certain things. Okay. Like, no. Um, as much as I agree with the whole... Um, you know, this is not the reason. This is not a reason. Okay. <laughs> this is not a reason why. It, he's wrong. <laughs> I've said enough. Office door unlocked. Those eight dirt bags will be in a shoe right now, okay? Bottom line! Brad. Any update? None. They were last seen at that cemetery in Oswego. We'll get them. They'll get them. It's been handed over to the FBI. That doesn't mean it can't work. It, it does, actually. You and I have been pulled off the pursuit. Why? Well, we're going to find out shortly. We have to report to the DOC headquarters. I will meet you there. Sir, we can get these guys. You just give me a couple more days and I swear I'll get them. You're not listening, bro. We've got to go. You're not listening. I've always wondered, and I've actually asked um, a police officer this one time, a detective. A retired detective. I've, I've, I've always been wondering because in TV shows, we get this a lot where it's like there's this ridiculous tension between interagency working together and stuff like that. And they always show that off in TV. And, you know, you would think that it's like that in real life. It's actually not like that. You know what I'm saying? It's actually not like that. At least from what I've asked and what, you know, it could be different elsewhere, of course. But this retired detective that I was talking to, I've always, you know, I've asked them, like, what is it like, you know, when it comes on to agencies working together, different police officers from the FBI, you know, um, you know, DEA, all these acronyms, right? How do they work, you know, when they, when they have to work together or stuff like that is is there always tension or anything like that that they not like when they have to give up the case to like a federal agency like what's it like because you know tv presents it's like yeah you know i'm saying there's always this weirdness about it you know what i'm saying um but it's it's also law it's the law you know what i'm saying it's the law and of course you want you know, sometimes you would want local credit. You get what I'm saying? Um, and I can understand if, you know, the FBI just comes in because it becomes a federal case and they come in. You feel some sort of way, you know, um, because they can just jump in or whatever. But it's the law. You can't. <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't fight against the law. But, you know, the interagency interactions is not usually bad. Sometimes there is tension, he says. You know, but for the most part, he says, you know, people are always happy to hand over those cases because it's less work for you. You know what I mean? Oh, oh. man, I'm so sorry. My bad. My bad, bro. Scott Cobra. Yeah, hi, I'm with the Des Moines Herald. I'm covering the LJ Burroughs hearing. What time's that start today? This is such a bad idea. Thank you. Three o'clock. Hearing last half hour max. We'll be taking down the transport bay at 10 till to catch the four o'clock van. So how do we get close to him? Well, 
When I was locked up, I had nothing to do except study the briefs. Nick Severin's bar number is on the front page of every one. If you want to talk to LJ, we just... We pose as one of his attorneys. Yeah. How was Schofield able to have exclusive access to you, pull a shank on you, and bind you to your chair, the warden of the penitentiary? I trusted him. Obviously, he betrayed that trust. Officer Bellick. Is it true that almost all the inmates who either escaped or tried to escape worked in prison industries? That's right. Why did these inmates have so much time to dig a hole in the floor of the guard's break room while working prison industries? I can answer that with all due respect. If any of you have ever worked today in a prison, you would know that since an inmate only gets 19 cents an hour, some are bound to drag their feet. Officer Bellick. Is it true you sold the right to run prison industries to the highest bidder? No. Who the hell told you that? This is unbelievable. While we're wasting time in here, there are eight escaped convicts out there. Oh. That's where they're getting the information from. Employed at Fox River as a correctional officer, Mr. Geary. Yep. Yeah, until he was fired for shaking down inmates. That'll be your last outburst, officer. Were you aware of any arrangement Officer Bellick had with any inmate regarding prison industries? Yeah, he sold it to John Abruzzi. John Abruzzi, who was one of the escaped convicts. Yep. We'll Damn, bro. To substantiate this if we have to, Officer Bellick, so I'm giving you one chance to get in front of it. Did you sell prison industries to John Abruzzi? Yes or no? Yes. But at no time was That'll I aware be all, of any Officer talk Bellick. of escape. That will be all. Warden, you and Officer Bellick can step out into the hallway. We'll call for you when we reach a decision. Jesus, man. Freaking Gary, bro. He's gonna kill you, buddy. Sirs, you had the hand iced, so I was able to restore blood flow, and the bones are pinned. However, I, I recommend you get medical attention ASAP. <laughs> Meanwhile, some aspirin will help thin the blood and avoid clotting. Antibiotics, some painkillers. <laughs> I usually tell the owner of the dog, cat, whatever, to coat them with peanut butter so they're easier to chew, but obviously, in your case. You did one hell of a job, Doc. Well, thank you. Well, uh, it's okay for you to leave now. Oh, I'm leaving. Well, you're not leaving you. And you're not. What? You heard me. Look, sir, I haven't seen anything and I won't tell anyone. <laughs> well, no. You know, I fell for that bill of goods once before. Never again. Sir, I swear to God, I will tell nobody. You would, and I would die in prison. Please, 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 please. Oh. Now you did me a solid, so I'm gonna return the favor. This can go down humanely if you don't fight. But if you pull a stunt like that again, it's gonna get inhumane right quick. Your call. But one way or another, I am putting you down, Doc. And the thing about it is that he's stupid. Teabag is dumb because now you're gonna leave a trail behind. Yeah. Here. We got a visitor. I wonder if this guy is going to be the key to figuring in to figuring out the stuff. They finally say his name, Mahone. Um, I'm wondering if he's gonna get a whiff of what's going on. Yeah. I have to tell you, what your dad and uncle pulled off. Very impressive. I've been doing this 14 years, and most escapes can be attributed to dumb luck or brute force. The level of planning and sophistication that went into this one, and eight guys got out. I really do, professionally speaking. I'm a impressed. Admiration for Lincoln and Michael. Cool. Now we're buddies. What do you need? Help me bring them in. 
peacefully. I don't know where they are. I don't know where they're going. There's another way you can help. How? Go on TV. I can have a camera crew down here in a half an hour. You know what, man? The murder charge they put on my dad, the two murder charges they put on me, everything's been a setup coming from way up top. So the fact that you work for the government. Kind of hard to trust you right now. <laughs> gonna scare him I'll give you the same advice that you'd get from the guy working at the deli downstairs start thinking about yourself now in fact the sooner the better because no one not your father LJ not your uncle is going to do your time and at 16 years old you're looking at a long stretch how much time you get where you serve it who your cellmate might be You need to start thinking about yourself now. I want your dad, I want your uncle, and I'm willing to deal. Don't wait and let someone else get the reward. Nick Sovereign, bar numbers 56437. Call time with my client, LJ Burr. Hello. Know who this is? Yeah. Yeah. Nick Seven. How you holding on? Doing what I can do. How about you? I'm worried about you. I'm sorry about what you're going through. Thanks. Word is, uh, after this hearing, because of my dad being so high profile, they're, they're shipping me to an adult facility in Kingman, Arizona. Yeah, well. Hopefully that ain't gonna happen. You heard from Veronica today? She didn't show up. They gave me some court appointed clown. No. I haven't heard from her. Ah, hey, uh, you uh, could just tell him the Mr. truth. He came by and talked to me today. Yeah? He wanted me to help try and get him my dad to turn himself in. Well, knowing your dad, I doubt that's gonna happen. Listen up, LJ, this is real important. All right. On the third, look out for Otis Wright. You got that? On the third, look out for Otis Wright. Until then, keep your head up. What? Just remember that. I'm gonna do everything I can to get you out. Hey, Nick. If you talk to my dad, tell him no matter what, I love him. <clears throat> hey. Hey. Did you get him? Let's do this. The acts we commit in this life determine where we go in the next. And he who commits evil can never hope for eternal happiness. Never been a goal of mine, Doc. I'm more here and now type. I'll tell you something I know is true. The Indians here, the Tomahawk variety, some of them believe, well, used to believe before most of them were slaughtered, that when a warrior kills another in battle, he absorbs that fallen warrior's spirit. So this isn't the end for you, Doc. You're with me now. <laughs> Yo. Anything in particular I can help you find? Just looking. Thanks. Well, if you need any assistance, just give a holler. Give a holler. <laughs> Why is it you never? I never get this kind of customer service anywhere. Not even in like local hardware stores or some shit like that. Hey, we gotta go. I just need to pay up now. How are you today, officer? 
we're right back here. We can make it to the courthouse on foot from here. You don't understand. Everything is in that car. Forget the damn car. We don't have time. Come on now, let's go. This man is out here living his best life right now. <laughs> It is the finding of this panel. Warden Pope, you'll be docked two weeks, placed on three months probation. Officer Brad Bellick will be terminated effective immediately. Ooh. Mr. Bellick, you can acting like you didn't see that coming. They have from Fox River, that'll be all. I've, uh, I've worked at Fox River uh, since I was 18 years old. Being a CO is my life. And we appreciate that. Look, you know, we could have saved a lot of time if you would have just told us from the beginning that this was going to be a railroad. That'll be all, Warden. There is only one person responsible for this escape out there. His name is Michael Schofield. It's not Officer Bellick. It's not me. But you need a fall guy? Fine. But you're not going to be just taking Officer Bellick's job. Because even though I am not proud of many of his actions, it will be a cold day in hell when I turn my back on one of my own men. I quit. That Ooh. would be all. Seriously, Michael, you don't have to do this. It's a horrible idea, man. I'm not on board at all. <laughs> I am not on board. We got a call from Nick Sabrin earlier today. What was that all about? He's my attorney. That's privileged. Hmm, that's odd because Nick Saverin was found dead in his apartment an hour before that call came into you. Listen up, LJ. This is real important. You know, for someone who's so convinced that the government is capable of so many underhanded things, you sure are playing fast and loose with me. What are you gonna do? Throw another fake murder charge on me? Who's Otis Wright? I have no idea. I think you do. And if you don't tell me, after you're convicted, I will be in that courtroom when you're sentenced and I will hang you out to try. That call was supposed to be private. It's, it's attorney-client privilege. If he knew what he was talking about, he could say, listen, I thought I was talking to Nick. It, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Put me in touch with the prosecutor in the L.J. Burroughs case. I want a meeting. They're going to force L.J. out. Otis Wright. Hold on. I'll escort the boy. <laughs> he caught Otis on, man. Otis Elevator on the right. What is he planning? Keep in the holster, no one gets hurt. Keep it in the holster. Got the real gun now, Michael. Come on, Michael. Back off! Back off! You're not shooting anybody, neither are you. Give yourself up, and your kid can walk. It's the only way he's getting out of this place. It's the only way. Dad. Dad. Hey, you gotta let me go. Dad. Schofield is in the building. Take him. You guys go. Cover that way. Schofield and Burroughs are in the building. Come on. 
As I said, bad idea. <laughs> this was this was such. Some of this nigga still living with mama. You have got to be kidding me, dude. You are the worst. Shouldn't you be looking for the convicts? Why don't you think I somebody else doing that, mom? You okay? This man really still living in his mama's house. <laughs> Bellic, I'm disappointed in you, bro. I'm good. Okay. I'm disappointed in you, bro. This man really still live in his mama's house. At his age, this man is probably 40. He look 40. <laughs> He's been working there since you were 18 years old. You didn't think to move out of your mama's house, bro? Or did he leave him a clue? Probably told him he's sorry. Whoa. He's gonna smash it. I'm breaking out. Or not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I wonder if they would think differently if they knew why Michael did it. You know what I'm saying? Or the conspiracy. Would they think differently? Thank you for calling Autumn Star, Dr. Gudat. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Uh, dead on. How can I help you today? I need, the uh, directions. Where to, sir? Utah. Everybody going to Utah, bro, for that money. And it's a really good decision as well, from a writing perspective. I'm sorry. To keep the other characters relevant. Everybody has a yeah. uh, yeah. common goal, if you will. You must be Deborah Jean. It's nice to meet you. Yes, same here. It's so funny because I was almost ready to leave when you called. No one else responded. I guess there's not a lot of Utah people out here. Are you from there? Nah, I just, you know, I'm headed up there to uh, collect an inheritance. My grandpa died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's all right. He went out with his boots on. <laughs> so where's your stuff? Uh, I, I mailed it yesterday. Mailed it? I've never heard of that. <laughs> you know, you don't want to lug it around. And plus, I got a boy who works for UPS, so he hooked it up. Where do I know this girl so from? You want to bounce? She looks very familiar. Okay. I'm parked out front. She looks very familiar. And stuff. Oh, wow. They just announced the rewards on the TV. I don't what remember reward? if it... the convicts. For the convicts, the ones Is this thing about to kill himself? How much? A hundred thousand dollars a piece. Three hundred thousand to the animal who killed President Reynolds' brother. Every wacko in the country is going to be after those bums now, wouldn't you say? Well, you can become a bounty hunter now. I think he was just about to kill himself, bro. We gotta move. I can't. Oh! You gonna have a hamstring injury right now? Oh, he got hurt. dumb y'all should have never went to get aj um lj like that it's gonna be a long ride to arizona move yes they should have never went to got him they they got to work you have the chance to be out there working the case let lj 
be a man because all he is is just making one bunch of mistakes every time. Get Ben at all the area hospitals, wherever they are. One of them's bleeding good, which means they either come to us or they die. <sighs> but what I'm saying is they should leave LJ. You know what I'm saying? They should go out, do what they're doing, get the money, whatever lay low and figure out how to exonerate themselves that's what they should do it's you you directly put yourself in arms danger if you can crack the case you can get lj released if you can prove that lj didn't commit the murders and this is all a setup you get lj out anyways but you risk getting lj out of out of this situation out of you know what i'm saying let the system take take a course. You guys are out now. Veronica is dead. Y'all know that. Nick is dead. Y'all know this. Why are you going to risk going there? As I said from the beginning, man, terrible idea. And Michael should have never agreed to it. But I understand how Lincoln is feeling and why he wanted to go get LJ. It was just a bad decision. You know what I'm saying? It was just a bad decision, man. But at the end of the day, let's talk about the episode. I know I talked a lot for no reason, um, but here we are. Um, one of the things I loved about this episode, the continuation situation with T-Bag. Now we are separated from, you know, all the other guys that were with the crew. Um, you know what I'm saying? And it's a way to kind of alleviate concentration. You know what I'm saying? It's a way to alleviate concentration. And I talk about this stuff because the reason why I talk about the, from a writing perspective, a lot of times from a production perspective, a lot of times is because a lot of times people don't really understand, you know, why certain decisions are made sometimes. And so I, of course I'm still speculating, but I can give you an idea of what happens sometimes, why certain things happen in TV shows, why certain decisions are made during C TV shows and stuff like that. Um, as in this one, a lot of times, um, you know, if it's not necessary, of course, they're gonna take their time and add, you know, show us what's going on with one person here while we're carrying on with the main story as they did in this one showing us what's going on with tweener what he's doing um and also with teabag you see trying to trying to put everybody into the story right now you know what i'm saying you're not getting enough time to really dive into what's really going on you know what i'm saying it's because there's so many different characters to cover so many interesting characters so it was a good decision to um let us get separated from from franklin abruzzi you know what i'm saying um what are the other two um sucre um there's there's another one or it's just three of them it was three it was five yeah, it was it was just those three. So it was good to get separated from them because um at the end at the end of the day, that's it's not what you want. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to have to be covering these characters just just going through. They wanna have that concentration on the main stars of the show as what's going on with them. So it was a good decision to get that separation. Um in in my opinion right in my opinion it was a good decision so from that perspective and from from a production point of point of view as well it makes sense it makes sense to do that because you don't want to get caught in this trying to write for every character every every episode you get what i'm saying it, it just it's too much work it's too much work and it's counterproductive as well it's counterproductive because guess what if we're if we're not getting a uh, uh um, not necessarily a deep dive, but a character development for our main characters, what the show is about Michael and Lincoln. If we're not getting that every episode and you're cutting away to this character that's not so interesting or this character that's not so interesting, it can cause the audience to lose interest. So you have to have a focus, especially now that you're in multiple seasons of the show. So I just wanted to put that perspective 
out there if you know what i'm saying i know you guys have enjoyed the show already but you know i like to break down stuff a little bit more a lot um you know sometimes so um yeah man this episode really dealt with they didn't really show anything from the political side of things but it still was exciting to watch this episode and kind of showing um lincoln and michael trying to go get lj which i think was just a horrible idea it, it, it didn't need to happen and they forced their way into doing this and now they're on the run again now lincoln is hurt what are you going to do now hmm? what are you planning to do now um michael now you have an injured man you're gonna have to try to patch him up somehow put yourself in a position that's not great um great update everybody seems to be heading to utah of course everybody's gonna head to utah they don't know exactly where this money is but everybody's heading to utah i think franklin is the only one that knows exactly i think um i th i don't know i don't remember if tweener was there i think he was the last one that went over before franklin and then i think he heard before he left um, because, you know, West Milena, he actually spoke it pretty loudly. And I think, I think they heard, but the rest of them that was over there before they didn't hear about it, all about it. But Franklin knew, um, about the money. So, so he's for real, for real. He's probably going to head out there to try to find that money. He knows pretty much exactly where it is. Cause he heard exactly what West Milena said. I don't know if tweener heard the entire thing but he said he's heading to utah so i'm guessing he kind of knows um also t-bag was it t-bag was the one i'm gonna have to go back and watch to see who was in that room when Wes milan was talking db cooper I'm, I'm gonna have to check to see but in any case guys this was a great episode great continuation from episode one um, I just think that was a good idea, but it's, it's still the tit for tat situation. Now we know what the agent's name is, it's agent Mahone. So uh, hopefully I can remember for the rest of the time, whatever. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in as always, man. I'm moving on to the next episode. Can't stop watching. Um, if you guys want to see more episodes by the time you're seeing this one, more should be out on Patreon. Of course, so you can go there and um watch more episodes of course who want to support the channel anyways thank you guys so much i appreciate y'all see you guys for the next one man peace